Peace. I'm good, man. I told Kyle, I said, we're not friends anymore. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you worked a lot with me and, um, uh, oh, uh, what do you call it? Acting. Yeah. When you, yeah. Did you work a lot on, was it mainly fielding? Was it hitting, combo? Um, no, I mean, main, mainly fielding, obviously being the infield coach. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we talked about a lot of things. But Kyle and I are pretty tight, but not anymore. He's he's off my list now. <laughs> hitting grand slams. No more grand slams. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Emily to jump on here. I'm here. Okay. You ready? Yep. She's on ready. her way to the beach. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm outside. Right. I'm outside the beach. Nice. Um, tw- 25% of the way. Oh, your robot talking on me, Emily. But how would you evaluate? Sorry. All right, go for it. You said 25 something, and then I well, could. Let me. Uh, Wait, you can you hear me now? Yeah. Right now, go ahead. Okay. 25% of the way through the season, which sounds strange, but how would you assess your team at this point? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's I know we're six and nine, so I'd like to be nine and six or or better than that. So we have some things obviously we we still need to improve on. We still have 70, 75% of the season left, which is good. Um, but we, there's a lot of things we need to do better. But I like where, you know, the, the mentality of our ball club, I like it. Um, they're together. They're, they care. They're, they're working hard. They're doing all those things. But, you know, we just got to improve a lot of little things on the field. That's all. Um, and I think once we do that, uh, the consistency from, like, a bullpen standpoint, we're still kind of feeling out, you know, some guys and, and, and what they're capable of and what situations they can handle. So once we kind of get that stabilized, I think that's going to help a lot. I think we have the back end pretty stable um you know bat quality has been better like i said things are trending in the right direction um but we just got to keep keep improving do you you i know a lot of times managers will you know kind of divide the season up into parts did you do that going into this season like take a look at this at the 20 percent mark at the 25 percent mark do you do that at all with the Um, short season in a similar way that you do the regular I, yeah, I think I, I think we de- I definitely assess things quicker. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm definitely quicker to make a uh, either a change or just you know, hey, I'm not going to let this ride out. I think um, it's hard to it's hard to break it into segments. Um, I think it, it's it's been such a weird year. I feel like the the hot and cold. We we're seeing it throughout baseball, honestly. Like you're seeing some teams that are that are doing pretty well that maybe didn't have you know any expectations going in. And then you're seeing teams that are, we're supposed to be really good that that aren't playing well. And you're seeing players that are. It, there's just a lot of ups and downs right now. So trying to stabilize that the best we can without being complacent, I think, is the hardest thing. And not just saying, okay, we're just going to ride this out. We do have to kind of put our, put our foot on the gas sometimes to say there's urgency, and we have to feel that, and we have to be okay with that um, because the season's going to be done before we know it it's going to be halfway before we, next time you talk to me I feel like it's going to be hey you're at 50 percent now what do you think you know I mean that's how quickly this thing is going so I, I don't want to get complacent I, I, we need to have urgency right now we talked about Izzy last night a little bit but is he you know he's starting to make so many plays defensively that are now becoming routine because we're seeing them on a regular basis the, the evolution of him defensively, do you attribute that a lot to the fact that he's just been able to devote so much time to that position in particular? Or where, where, where would you say these guys have come from? I only, I only heard the beginning of that, but uh, I, I, would, I, uh, I think, you know, him just playing third base contributes to his success there. Like, you know, he's, he's only working on it. He's only focused on it. He's, you know, visualizing plays at third base. When you move around, you know, it's, it's hard to get kind of locked in on that position and the difficulty of different plays and the rhythm of different plays. Um, so I think just because he's playing only third base is probably the, the contributing factor to him playing so well. I still think, you know, if he moved around, he'd be fine at third base. It's not that he wouldn't play it as well, but I just think that the timing and the, the comfort level is obviously better when you're just playing one position. Okay, me and my spotty internet are going to get out of here. Thank you, buddy. Um, 
Other questions for Woody? I do not have a lineup yet, so other questions for Woody. Br. Look at the Vulcan sign there. Br. Live long and prosper, uh, yeah. man. Um, Chris, besides the obvious of helping pitch your team into postseason, what do you want Taylor Hearn to get out of this season? Um. I want him to get comfortable being a big leaguer. Like, I want him to believe that he belongs out there. That, that's the biggest thing. I think last year, you know, it's hard for him not to – it's hard for him, for him to put that in the rearview mirror. Obviously, you know, he, he wasn't happy about that. He had a long time. That's all he could think about in his training. And, you know, obviously it motivated him. You know, you talk to him. But just getting out there and proving that he belongs out there, I think, is, is what I want him to get out of this. And obviously to help us win. Um, you know, what the spot I had him in last night, I felt was like, you know, a perfect spot with the lefties coming up. You know, even the righties that were up there didn't hit lefties as well. So it was more of a softer landing for him. Um, you know, I felt like he did okay. But the more comfortable he gets, he's a power arm. And as much work as he's put into his slider to see it in play in action, you know, if he can get that consistent, he could be a real, real force for us down there. State the stupidly obvious, this is not a great situation for anybody this season, but. How difficult, I mean, you guys wanted Hearn and Palumbo and several others to pitch every day down in AAA or every fifth day, whatever. How difficult is this season for guys like him and Palumbo maybe? Yeah, it is. It's really tough. Um, you know, the, to, to the credit of the, the staff and the players at the taxi squad, they're getting a lot out of it down there as much as they possibly could. And I think, you know, the credit to like getting Taylor up right now, where he was probably two or three weeks ago, especially with his slider, we didn't. I didn't feel like it was competitive enough to put in a big league game, and you know the the, the couple of weeks that he's worked really hard on it. You know he's down there. He's obviously maintaining his competitiveness to be able to pitch, but also kind of working on some things and working on the shape of that pitch to be able to put him in a spot like last night. Uh, you know speaks volumes of what they're doing down there um, in a situation like you said, Tr. That's not optional. I mean it's not optimal um, for getting them the reps and the innings that they really need. Next question, please, Sam. I think you used um, Ian Jabot not like nine times in the first 15 games. I'm just curious, you know, why you like going him so much and what you've seen from him. Um, he's, he's been good. good. He's been good. He's a, he's a guy that kind of came into camp that, you know, proved his way on the team, honestly. Like, I didn't know what kind of expectations I had for him. I thought in the first spring training he was just okay. Um, and then he came into camp this time and, you know, was blowing do doors off people. I mean, he was punching everybody out. Uh, and then he continued that on, you know, in the regular season. Now there's still obviously some, you know, I want to see how he handles big spots. I put him in some big spots. Um, like last night, obviously he had to eat up two innings. I didn't want him to do that, but we were kind of, we had to, uh, just based on who we had available. But um, he's been good. He's been really good for us. He's filled a lot of different roles for us, is, you know, different innings for us, different spots. He can get lefties and righties out. So he's, he's been a really uh, pleasant surprise for us, for sure. You mentioned you kind of using different spots, like when you're up sometimes, and you know sometimes when when you're down. Do you see him in a, being a pitcher at some point that you know late inning with a lead type guy that whether you know it's you, you guys or whatever team he's with being on can, can kind of fill that role? I'd like to. I mean that's that's kind of I I, I was forced to kind of do it early on, uh, just because of you know we had so many guys down early, but. Um, you know, his stuff is good. Like, he's got power stuff that can, like I said, that matches up pretty much against anybody. So no matter if it's a left-handed, right-handed lineup, um, there are certain guys that he matches up better with. But he's been good. You know, and, and if that stuff is real, you know, it doesn't matter how they set their lineup up. He can, you know, go in and face the best hitters. And I don't want to overexpose him, but at the same time, I want to kind of see what he's capable of. Other questions? Kevin. Is there, a, is, is there any chance that you activate Santana today? Is, is that in the works? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, okay. You know, we're still kind of we, – we, I, I definitely want to see him be able to throw, you know, uh, at least to be able to play first or second base. I think he could probably play first base right now, but, but not second base. Um, okay. It just – you know, with only a four-man bench right now, it puts us in a little bit of a bind if we can't use him on defense. That's why. And – so most of my stuff today is just housekeeping. Goody pitched it last night. He's obviously looser. Uh, I mean, how, do you have any report on how he came through last night? Yeah, he if he wasn't 
able to pitch yesterday, he would have we would have put him on the IL. So he was you know he came in, he threw a, bull, a little touch and feel bullpen, um, sat around for a while, and then played catch a little bit just to see if it would stiffen up on him. And he said he felt fine. So okay, it was just the, the last thing. I, I know you don't have a lineup official yet, but your intent to use your regular middle infielders today? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I may get one of them off tomorrow, but not not today. They both have okay, had success. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I looked at their numbers. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Other questions for Woody? Well, here you are. You got one more? Yeah, more housekeeping. Uh, um, we, we got uh, Lynn pitching on Friday. I, I got Gibson. And you know who comes? Gibson Allard with the weekend, or do you know you? Um, Allard's throwing the third day. So yeah, I think it's I think it's Lynn Gibson Allard. Okay, thank you very much. Other questions, Dave? Okay, so uh, for the day to reflect on it now, is was last night just a, a one-off? Are we going to go open again now or anytime soon? Has there been any discussion about where we go with it? No, we're rowing one, so we're never opening it again. Um, <laughs> we, gave, we gave 10 runs. We're done with that. Um, no, I think we will. I, I think we will. Obviously, we wanted to kind of see what it would, how it would play and what it would feel like. Um, I saw some of our guys kind of beating with sweat more than normal, so maybe we'll keep it close for a little bit and, until it starts to cool down a little bit more. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's kind of uh, we'll play it by ear, I guess. But yeah, not happy with the on one start on that. <laughs> DJ, DJ, uh, Woody, uh, Mike Miner. Uh, what are you looking for tonight? I know you mentioned the idea of the velocity being down, but also just not caring as late as it had been a year ago. Is it is it simple as that? Is there more inside the, the fastball that you're looking at, whether it's spin rate, location? What are you keeping your eyes on as far as that count tonight? Yeah, I think you know we kind of obviously the training staff and him kind of dug in on to see kind of figure out what was going on because I don't know if it was just it wasn't a lack of you know preparation or I don't even think it's a stamina thing. You know, it could have been a nerve thing. There's there's a few different things that they were working on. So um, he feels better. We're obviously going to keep an eye on it tonight and see uh, see how it, it, it trends. If the trend's starting to show, you know, pretty quickly down, um, then we might get him out of there sooner. Uh, I don't foresee him going, you know, honestly, five innings. You know, there's no reason to at this point to, to kind of push it. You know, if he goes three or four and he feels good, you know, maybe that's kind of the, the start to the next start to – so he has, you know, a solid base to move on. Um, I just don't want to see it go back down again, and then have him have to fight through that again. There's no reason. Gotcha. And real quick, the exchange on that seems to be a little bit more slider usage, and it's been good. I mean, as far as the swings and misses and some of the chases that he's getting, are you okay with that exchange? He's not an older guy necessarily just yet, but the idea that if that velocity does stay down and he's now making that adjustment of sliders over more fastballs, even those fastballs so good the last couple of years, is he ready to do something like that? Is that okay that that's the game plan going forward that the fire usage goes up? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I th we kind of challenge him to do that anyways. We challenge him to use his slider and his curveball more anyways. Um, you know, he's obviously got a really good fastball, but sometimes he gets, you know, he, the one thing he did last year was, you know, when he moves his fastball, it's got a natural cut on it, and then he wouldn't change up pretty much any side of the plate. It kept a lot of hitters off balance, but then when he was able to use that curveball or that slider as well, it just opened up the entire plate all over the place. Um, and then he could use his fastball up for strikeouts. That's what you can see at the end of last year when it wasn't 93, 94, he wasn't getting the swing and miss at the top. Um, it was foul balls, a lot of foul balls. Um, he just had a hard time putting hitters away. So we just felt like using the breaking ball more helps him regardless, even if he has the velocity, um, just to, to, to miss more bats. Thank you. Here's a couple more. Uh, Dave, did you have a question? DJ covered it. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right, a couple more. Uh, Evan? Hey, yesterday you kind of addressed a little bit on the on the lineup manipulation, um, and we'll see what the, the official lineup comes out today, but in your first 15 games, you have 15 different batting orders. Wow, um, I didn't know that. Is, Crazy. Is that, is that too much manipulation? I mean, where do you where does it come down in terms of your mind? What's the difference between some idea of stability and the the need for manipulation sometimes? Um, I think the main guys are pretty much hitting in their same spots. So I you know listen I'm, I've moved Elvis around a little bit. You know if you look at left right, 
you know, today I have Frazier hitting third, so, you know, he's obviously crushed lefties. I actually like the idea of hitting Willie no matter what in the three hole um, when he starts to get going. Uh, he, I feel like he's hitting the ball really hard right now. He hit a couple balls, you know, he hit a ball really hard off a of lefty yesterday. Um, so there are, there are certain guys, you know, haven't moved Joey only a couple times to the three hole, but probably going to primarily keep him in that four hole. So I'd like to keep it stable. I'm just trying to, it's kind of like the bullpen, like we're kind of feeling out what's the best, uh, you know, who's the hottest right now, who's going to be the most productive. You know, I want those most productive guys at the top. Um, and if they're consistently productive, they're going to be at the top. And that's the way I'm kind of looking at it. I didn't know that was 15 in, in different ones. That's bizarre. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the Calhoun inability to play for a while and Santana's injury, that also adds to it. But, yeah, it's a 15 in the first 15 games. Let's go so. 60 for 60, Evan. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll work on the random one. The last one, I'll have you in the lineup after we All clinched. Right, <laughs> yeah, oh, TR, TR didn't like that one. <laughs> I would pay to see Evan Grant hit. I personally would. Good, how you doing? Good. And there's a really good long article today in The Athletic about offense being down and the various reasons, and they go through a bunch of the obvious things, shifts and starting pitchers not facing batters for the third time and things like that. But they also bring up the ball, and they've done some tests already on the ball, and they claim it is not last year's ball, it's the ball from 2017-2018. Have any of the players been commenting yet on the actual ball? No, I you know I've heard some about our ballpark, <laughs> just because it's bigger than our old ballpark. But um, no, I haven't. Um, I think I you know I read part of that article. I don't know. I mean, unless we cut them open and do some scientific tests, uh, then we'll know. But I don't know. I mean, it it would make sense if if everything being equal, the ball doesn't go as far. But I, I don't know. No. no, I haven't heard really any any players complain about it. Um, after last night's just kind of all around stinker, how important was it for your team to bounce back immediately? Yeah, I like the uh, you know we came back out, we came back, scored two runs in the first inning. I thought Mikey was really good. Um, I actually let him <laughs> go further than I anticipated. Uh, he was begging me to go back out for the fifth because he felt good. That was a good sign. Um, you know, his velocity was kind of hovering there, still around 90, 91. Um, but he, he came out feeling really good about it, which was awesome. Um, and you see what we did on the bullpen there at the end was uh, some pretty filthy stuff, you know, from the left side. You know, Jolie going to, you know, Hernandez, and then Montero was filthy again. So overall, it was great. I mean, honestly, we needed that. Um, just a solid win. You know, I feel like, you know, we got hits when we needed to. We scored runs, and we held it the whole time. He had 27 in the first, wasn't it? Were you worried yeah, about how I was. he would be able to? Yeah, I was I was a little worried um, just because that kind of uh, you know length of an inning you know getting any time a pitcher throws more than that and you're already concerned about a low pitch count anyways. Um, but the second and third inning were good. You know he he talked me into going back out for the fourth. I wasn't going to, um, but he said he felt fine. Um, it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a health concern to not let him go back out. It was just more of a, what we had talked about before the game. Uh, but he said he felt fine. Still tried to beg me to go out for the fifth, and I had to be the bad guy to not let him. You said before that you were going, before the game, you were going to top load the, the lineup, with the guys that were producing at the top. That's where you got most of the production tonight. Yeah. What, what do you do with the bottom of that lineup with, with Elvis and Ruby? No, I mean, they're, they're grinding. They're, they're trying. I mean, it's not like they're not trying. They're, they're really, you know, they're frustrated because they're not producing. Um, you know, they just they just got to keep finding, trying to find solutions, honestly. You know, the, the bat quality, they, they, they didn't give in. I, you know, listen, sometimes things don't go your way as a hitter. I've been there. So, you know, whether or not we change things or, you know, other people are going to play at times, but I, I applaud their, obviously, they're, they're trying. They're fighting. Um, and I got their back on that because I know how hard it is to hit. Um, I don't want to make it to where it's, you know, every time they get out there, they, I have to get a hit or I have to. You can't hit that way. And I feel like they feel that right now. Um, it's good to have some urgency. But it's also unreasonable expectation to ask them to, you know, hey, you, you, you don't get a hit, you don't play. Um, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. So, um, yeah, we need production throughout the entire lineup. But, you know, obviously the top gave us a lot today. Thanks, Wade. Appreciate you. Other questions, please. Questions? They are.
Uh, Chris, your starter only went four innings. Your team did not hit a home run. In fact, you only had one extra base hit, and you still won won a game. That's what kind of lift is that for you guys to pull one out in that manner? Yeah, it was. Uh, it went better than anticipated as far as just how it kind of the bullpen laid out, um, and then what Jolie did. I didn't expect to get two out of him, but he threw the ball so well, and um, you know we sent him back out, hoping that he would get one or two outs, and he ended up going a full, obviously two. So, you know that I look at the you know from the fifth on, honestly, was was pretty important for us as a ball club to show that okay we get we get the ball to these guys, we can get it in between. Obviously, we got some some bridge arms as well, but um, we get it to those guys at the bot at the back end, man. We're we're gonna win a lot of games if we got the lead. You're- you're, you're going to get better starting pitching, and you have to mm-hmm. get better starting pitching. This is the kind of games you guys are going to have to win, either because of the ballpark or just because of the way your club is built, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, we got we got to find a way to win any game we can. Obviously, um, but, you know, have a four nothing lead, and then they, they these guys are kind of gritty. I mean, they don't really chase a whole lot. Um, they definitely put the bat on the ball. I, I think that we just outstuffed them at the end. But we saw yesterday how they can hit the ball. You know, they just they stay in the strike zone, and you know, the, yesterday they hammered us, but today, like I said, I think we just outstuffed them. But it was a desperate. We needed that win today. We needed that bad. Other questions for Woody? Anything else? Levi. Is we saw Doran obviously is in the middle of this sort of extended slump. We saw have a couple of the bats that went nine pitches and through a full count three different times. Is that excruciating as a manager watching a guy, trying to manage a guy, watching him feel like he's that close and then come away with an open court? Yeah, it's 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 frustrating for all of us. I mean, because I know we know the work that you know these guys are putting in, and um, he did. He had some good at bats. You know, he was obviously in some big spots early. You know, and, and wanted to obviously to to get the job done. You know, and you could you could tell he was upset that he was, you know, didn't come through in those moments. But I mean, you look at the nine or ten pitch at bat. You know, fouling a a three two changeup off a three two curveball off, and then misses a fastball. You know, I mean, um, it's. You know, they just got to keep on going. They got to try to find solutions. But honestly, like, there's no quit there, which I obviously is the one thing I demand, and that's the one thing I ask of all these guys is just don't quit no matter what happens because there's a lot of season left, and whether you have a great season or a below average season, you know, you may be the the guy in the big spot at the end of the year that has to have a big at bat for us. So we can't give up on any of our guys right now. Um, we got to support them through it. From your perspective, with them. Fell on a bunch of pitches. Was that a matter of good pitches that he was just hanging in at bat, or was that a matter of him sort of missing on pitches that he should be hitting? Both. I think there's both. I, I can kind of go back and look at some of those at bats and and see pitches that I thought he you know just missed that maybe he should have put forward hard, and then other ones that were you know three two breaking ball that he he stayed alive. Um, that was a you know a, a real close strike to ball pitch that you know if he takes it who knows. It was a it was a little mix of both. Um, I know he gets frustrated when he doesn't hit the pitches he should, uh, but that's just that's what happens, man. When you don't when you don't feel confident or you don't feel like you're able to, uh, you're trying to force things. A lot of times you miss pitches because you're putting too much pressure on yourself. A couple more before Mike comes in. Uh, let's go to uh, Jeff and then Chris. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. What have you thought about Solak here in the last week? He's been pretty good. Yeah, he's been. Yeah, he's he's been real good. I think you know he's been a little more aggressive. Um, I think he feels better about his swing. I think you know I think what we were seeing early on, he was a little bit hesitant to get his swing off because he didn't feel right, which I totally understand. Uh, when you don't feel good as a hitter and you don't feel like you want to make it out on the first pitch, so I think lately he's been more aggressive in the strike zone. Um, and he's been hammering balls. I mean, you know, what we saw last year, we knew he had power to all fields. Now we're starting to see those balls come off kind of hot. So one thing, he, he kind of stays afloat because he just grinds. He grinds through bats. He stays in the strike zone. So he works his walks. He gets his kind of like cheap hits to kind of keep him afloat. Um, and now he's starting to drive the ball. Hey, Chris. Well, Jeff just kind of asked my question, but the only follow-up that I can have to that is, has he pretty much forced your hand where you can't take him out of the lineup because he's just hitting the ball so well right now. 
Kind of, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of where we were at the end of, of camp, to be honest with you. You know, I, I, he wasn't crushing balls in camp, but he was just the grit and the grind, and you know, he was just finding a way to get hits um, and just you know, strictly out of battle mode. And I knew that eventually, once he got his timing and got kind of his, his swing clicked right, that he would start to do some damage, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. He's, he's definitely forced his way in the lineup.